The Netherlands, a small country in Europe with less than 18 million inhabitants. It is known for its canals, tulip gardens, windmills and cheese, but that is slowly changing. The Netherlands is now becoming more known for its involvement in organized crime and is slowly getting recognized as a narco state where drug trafficking and cold-blooded killings are normal. The Netherlands is a country in which soft drugs are tolerated and legal to consume. Amsterdam is known for its coffee shops. Tourists from all over the world visit the capital of the Netherlands to enjoy the ability of being able to buy and smoke weed openly. The decriminalization of soft drugs in 1976 in the Netherlands was very progressive. There are not many countries who treat the use of soft drugs similar as the Netherlands. However, it does not mean that there are no rules. You can only buy five grams from a coffee shop every day, you are not allowed to grow it yourself, and you must be 18 or over. This lenient approach to soft drugs might look innocent, but it is potentially the number one reason why the Netherlands is one of the biggest drug hubs in the entire world. Even though hard drugs are illegal in the country, in the last decade, the production of hard drugs in the Netherlands has skyrocketed. They are currently the world's largest producer when it comes to the fabrication of synthetic drugs such as ecstasy, methamphetamine, and LSD. Annually, the production of these synthetic drugs brings over 19 billion euros. But it's not just the production of drugs this small country excels in. They're also one of the biggest hubs in the world for trafficking drugs. They have a very good infrastructure and one of the biggest ports that connects the shipments from all over the world. A very strategic place, paired with good infrastructure, is the dream for every drug smuggler. It is unknown how many kilos of cocaine are flowing through the port of Rotterdam every year. In 2019, customs seized 74,000 kilos with a value of 1.8 billion euros. If you think that's a lot, the price per kilo of cocaine did not even move. If it was truly a big blow to the cocaine market, the price would have skyrocketed immediately due to the supply and demand. With a flourishing drug market, violence is undoubtedly coming sooner rather than later. For the Netherlands, it came soon. Real soon. The country is plagued by assassinations, mistaken murders, kidnappings and other wild shootings. No one is safe anymore. Plenty of innocent people, lawyers and news reporters have been killed in the drugs wars and it looks like it will only become worse as tensions grow stronger in the underworld. An example of the extraordinary violence was the assassination of Dirk Viersum. He was shot dead in the street on a Wednesday morning as he was leaving his home in the Buitveldert neighborhood of Amsterdam. He was representing Nabil Bakali, whose brother was also shot dead not long after the prosecutors listed Bakali as a witness in a case against 16 defendants' charges with five killings. Between 2015 and 2017, Femke Halsema, the mayor of Amsterdam, termed the shooting very disturbing, while Mark Rutte, the Prime Minister, called it a shock for our society because the victim was doing his job and its very essential role in our constitutional state. Jan Trisch of the Dutch Police Union warned that the government and lawmakers were underestimating the scope of organized crime in the nation, saying, this is confirmation that we live in a narco state. Ridwan Tahi and Said Razuki, two of the key suspects in the case Veersen was working on, were wanted men in the Netherlands and were under international investigation. 11 individuals, including Bakali, who has given police more than 1,500 pages of testimony against the group in exchange for a lighter sentence, are all being held on suspicion of being part of a cocaine smuggling organization. It was not just Nabil Bakali's lawyer that was killed. His confidant, Peter Ardavries, was also a very well-known crime journalist, was also killed in broad daylight. He was one of the most famous news reporters of the country, and the prosecutors believe that his death has been ordered by Tahi. De Vries sided with Nabil Bakali, thus the only option was for him to be killed. Just a year earlier, there was an attack on one of the biggest newspapers in the Netherlands that often reported on drug crime. In June 2018, a minivan struck the front door of the office with force. The minivan was filled entirely with big jerry cans that contained petrol. The driver got out of the car, lit the petrol on fire and fled the scene leaving a lot of damage to the office. That was not the only attack on a big newspaper. The same year, another office for a newspaper got shot with a bazooka. Around 11 p.m., neighbors heard a very loud noise and shattered glass. When police arrived at the scene, it became clear someone shot at the building with a bazooka and fled the scene. He was later apprehended. This newspaper once again reported a lot of crimes in the country and was thus deemed to be an enemy for the drug criminals. As the tension between gangs grew, so did the number of assassinations in the country. But unlike back in the day, gangs don't hire professional hitmen anymore. 
Young guys who have never held or shot a gun before are now hired to do the job. Oftentimes they would get a little information about their target and did not care to do any observation themselves. They wanted the money and they wanted it fast. This led to nearly 20 innocent people dying. Nearly 20 people were mistaken by the shooters for their targets, which they were not. People with families, men, women, they were all innocent, but were at the wrong place at the wrong time. In 2014, Rob Zwickhorst got killed whilst walking his dogs. He was killed because the killer thought he was Rob van der Bee, but Rob van der Bee had moved out of the neighborhood for a while. The most tragic one of all of them was Jordi Latumahina. The shooters killed him while he was entering his car with his wife and his little kid. They had mistaken him for someone else because Jordi had the same black Mini Cooper as the intended target. As if things were not getting crazy enough, Another movie-like discovery was made. In June 2020, the Dutch police arrested six men. They were suspected of preparing kidnappings on several key figures in the underworld. The police also found seven sea containers on a farm site somewhere in Brabant, a Dutch province bordering Belgium. They weren't just the regular sea containers, it was something else no one else could have ever thought of. Six of these containers were designed to function as jail cells, in which people could be tied down with shackles. They had a tiny bed and a toilet, they were totally soundproof and were equipped with cameras. That leaves you to guess what the last container was used for. This container was designed to be the scariest chamber of torture ever. Police found pruning shears, scissors, pliers, screwdrivers, handcuffs, knives, tapes, balaclavas, and black cotton bags that could be used over someone's head. Who knows what would have happened in those containers? Earlier that year, the police hacked a server with tons of encrypted messages between criminals. The messages of the criminals who were involved in this torture chamber were also amongst those encrypted messages. An intercepted message of a suspect was as follows. Once I got him on this chair, I'll make him feel like he is in hell. The police also found three vans to transport their hostages and two fast BMW M cars and 25 automatic weapons. After investigating, the police determined that Roger P to be the creator of this underworld prison. As we are moving to the end of this video, we've got to discuss the Dutch motor clubs. Motor clubs are not exactly what you'd think in the Netherlands, especially the Kaho Waho motor club. They were mercenaries that criminals could hire to kill, extort, and acquire guns and torture on demand. One of the biggest criminals in the Netherlands reportedly gave Kalo Waho a list of at least 50 people he wanted them to assassinate. The leader of the motorcycle, Delano R, said he was happy with the list. He told his guys there was plenty of work for the time being. Ultimately, members of the gang only managed to kill five people. Those men are now being prosecuted for those five murders, and also for, pay attention, six attempted murders, preparation of at least eight murders, torture, extortion, terrorist attack, illegal firearms, and associate of a criminal enterprise. So what do you think after watching this video? Is the Netherlands becoming a narco state? Let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more videos about crime.